Hello, I'm Andre Botma, and in this video, I teach you how to submit your 2020 tax return. On this channel, I help you be a responsible adult by filing your own taxes. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. The first step is to go to secure.sasefiling.co.za, link in the description, and we are just going to log in. Once you've logged in into your e-filing profile, and you have not submitted your 2020 tax return, you may see something like this, where it says you have been auto assessed and on the right hand side, it shows view. Now you can click that view button and it will say SARS has simulated a tax calculation for you. Please click the continue button to accept or amend. Let's continue. I'm not going to immediately accept it, but I'm going to edit the return because I want to check, I want to make sure that everything is correct. You'll see the 2020 period will show there and also the date that it was issued, but we are going to go to the right here and click open. And then this is the income tax work page. So you can click on my tax return. You can read through this if you want to, but I normally just click OK and then click OK again. So on the top left hand side, you can click this sandwich button to open up everything and you can scroll down and you'll see all these questions. Now you have to tick yes if any of these questions apply to you or you click no if it doesn't apply to you. In this case, is this declaration made by a taxpayer? No, they weren't unemployed. Um, there was one RP5. The medical aid is preloaded. I'll show you what that looks like. And then there was also retirement annuity contributions, which is grayed out. And this is also preloaded. No travel allowance. So I'm just going to tick no to the ones that doesn't apply. Also, did you receive any interest? Normally, this also would also preload. So you can't change this field if it's grayed out. Everything else is no. And I'm just going to say uh, no, did you receive any other income or do you have any other allowable expenses? In this case, I'm just going to say no. If that is not the case and you tick yes, then it's going to open up the comprehensive questions. And under comprehensive questions, you've got foreign income, your capital gains, partnership details. This is where you put in your sole proprietor, local farming, other receipts and accruals, your foreign tax, non-taxable income, VCC investments, and then other deductions. But in this case, I'm just going to leave that alone, go back to standard questions. I'm just going to no there. So it's very simple. You tick yes with what applies to you, you tick no that what doesn't, and that simplifies the return for you, okay? So I've completed the standard questions now. The next step is to go to taxpayer information make sure that this information is correct before you submit it contact details here you can update your contact details you can update your email address here your cell phone number your telephone number you can also update your street address and your postal address you can also select here if the postal address is the same as your street address that's taxpayer information next banking details make sure that your banking details are correct then you want to check your RP5. If you received it from your employer, you can compare you can compare the two. And then under income, for the first time in a 2020 tax year, your investment income preloads, specifically your local interest income and also your REITs should pre-populate. What doesn't pre-populate is foreign interest and foreign dividends. And then under deductions, you've got medical aid here's the medical aid detail that preloads under disability just make sure you tick no and you'll see the red section goes away if i tick yes again or i leave this blank then you'll see i need to fill in the detail anyway where it shows red you there's something that you've missed you need to complete whatever is in red and then i'm just going to tick no and then under retirement contributions you can just check that your ra details are reflecting Okay, so just for the sake of showing what the what the uh, comprehensive questions looks like under yes, comprehensive questions, let's say this person had capital gain, maybe they had foreign income, there was a 
local business that they've had and they had non-taxable income. Okay, I'm just going to show you what it looks like. Under income, this is where your foreign, your capital gains will reflect and there and over here you can you can choose which type immovable assets is property financial instruments is shares and the rest isn't always or isn't often used but they are the there's cryptocurrency for bitcoins uh, buying and selling of bitcoins or other cryptocurrencies if you if you have a sole proprietorship local business and trade so you can put in the name in there. The unique identifier should be on a prior assessment that you received. Your income, expenses, and then your profit and loss will show you. If it's not a sole proprietorship, but you're in a partnership, you can just say yes, and then you select the percentage here. Okay, and then non-taxable income, we've got some options here. You can put in your, uh, your exempt local dividends, inheritances, foreign pension if you receive one donations that you've received okay once you've reached this stage and you are happy with what the numbers look like then you can click calculate and so once you've clicked calculate you can open the xos calculation and you can just browse through the numbers to make sure that it makes sense to you and at the bottom it might show a payment or a refund in this case it shows a negative which means it's a refund Sometimes if it shows a payment and you've made provisional tax payments, your provisional tax payments won't show on this calculator. Okay, so don't always trust this. This is not 100%, but it is quite reliable. And then if you're happy with the SARS calculator, you can go back into the return and click Submit. So once you've clicked the Submit button, it will show that you filed this on e-filing. And an, a, an original assessment should immediately be issued unless there's an unless there's a problem and then a an error message will show over here. Okay, and then if SARS asks for supporting documents, you can check that easily by opening the assessment. And once you've opened it, on the left hand side here, under amount refundable to you by SARS unprocessed payments selected for audit or verification if it shows yes there then you'll need to submit supporting documents and the supporting documents will show in between like it will show underneath your my tax return and that's where you will need to submit your supporting documents so just important if your supporting documents have not been submitted yet SARS will withhold the refund until you submit the supporting documents and they have verified it or they've sent you a completion letter. Now you have 21 working days to submit your supporting documents to SARS and then SARS themselves has 21 business days to actually verify the supporting documents. And all what it means is they are comparing what you've submitted to the documents that you've actually uploaded to SARS. And that is it. That is how you file your income tax return for the 2020 tax year. So if you are watching this in a future year, um, this information will be old and there will probably be new videos out about the new tax year. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like or subscribe because I make a lot of e-filing tutorials and I teach people how to be good at tax. Cheers. See you in the next video.